In this video, I'm going to present a couple of important parameters that you will need to consider if you're planning on building a multi-story dwelling in cross-laminated timber, CLT. Let's get right to it. A common way of designing a wall, a unit separation wall, is to have your CLT load-bearing structure like this, and then you have a second sound insulation layer with double layers of gypsum, for instance. You could shift one of them to a wooden board to make it easier to attach things and screw mount stuff on it. And then you will have probably 70 framing structure here and you will have an air gap depends on how yeah it, it, that's actually a topic for another video I'm gonna do it some other time how large should the air gap be but you, you will need an air gap let's say it's 40 in this case so that's a pretty good air gap so you've got 40 you've got mineral wool and you've got a 70 load bearing frame no 70 f frame for the light construction here and the CLT might be I don't know let's say it's 160. Anyway, that's a typical wall between two units. Now, let us consider a real building and what it will look like. Depending on which way you turn this wall, so which side is facing each room, you will have quite a big effect on the flanking transmission. Because, yeah, let's look at it this way first. If you have a junction, and then on one side you have this lightweight layer with a with this frame and on the other one you have the CLT so this path is usually what determines the airborne sound insulation between two apartments because here you have CLT and CLT exposed and they are sensitive to franking transmission so usually you will need to put some sound dampening layer, elastic layer, either here, or you could put one on both sides. Uh, and, and then you can use thin ones and thick ones, all the way been seen from 6 to 25 millimeters, depending on what kind of acoustic performance you're after. And these things are very expensive, so you should choose wisely. There's a lot of money involved with, with these elastic interlayers. So it's very important to get it right. So we don't shoot over the target. So when do you need to have very good thick layers? And when can you get by with a thinner, simpler solution? Well, if we have this typical one here. And, uh, yeah, and let's say that we have, for instance, an... Uh, installation floor like this that kind of solution and this one also is the floor is floating on elastic cushion, cushions like this and then in a real building then if we consider let's consider the worst case scenario here if you if you have the from the top down outer wall maybe it's an it's a corner of the building so you have CLT and CLT and this is a facade so this is outdoors and then and then these other two walls are also CLT because you have that lightweight layer facing the next apartment like this now that's like a one room apartment but anyways you get what I mean here we got CLT on all four sides in this case what oops what that means is you will maximize the flanking transmission in this case because you will have first and foremost direct sound transmission that goes straight through the structure i'm talking about this one 
but then you will also have okay yeah now it's this way but in in our case we have it like this and that means you will have all four sides will have flanking transmission so you can see you have here primary five <laughs> I'm getting tired sorry five primary flank trans sound transmission paths to consider in this case and this means that the junction here the elastic interlayer whoa where did it go in this case where all of them are CLT this one will be more important so you will probably need to choose a really high quality solution in this case whereas if you can coordinate with the architects and the structural engineers and perhaps you can what if you flip two of these walls around so that you do it like this instead well the, the outer wall is still CLT you can't do much about that but we can perhaps flip these ones so they're the other way around there's you, you will have the same wall thickness but you will have the the light framed wall is now facing this direction instead we can just to make it super clear let's draw it in here so you can see that I flipped them around and you can also see the air gap here which is very important now what happens when you have this case then we're looking at it from this side instead here and that one is much smaller because the sound will have a much harder time to travel through these ones compared to the load bearing structure it's easier to more effective to transfer sound this way than to go through all these separate plates and beams and you will have more damping this way and this means also then that perhaps if I can draw this room once again ish now in the second case here you will still have you will still have this one the primary one and you will have the outer walls they're still there but these ones will be significantly reduced and in this case then now we have you can consider it like if it's a tub and we have five taps that are pouring water in the tub and in this first case they are all pouring quite a lot of water so then we need to add a lot of stopping power with the elastic interlayers whereas here two of the water taps we close them up pretty good so it's just a small amount of water coming through and that means that we don't have to use as strong elastic interlayers in this case so here's uh, perhaps some money to be saved if we can optimize the the floor plan well sometimes you you want to have this first case because you might want want to see the wood and yeah then that then you have to then you can do it of course but you have to remember that it will have several effects on other things here and it's not just the elastic interlayer i mean in this first case you will also have to consider the the floor structure itself because if you get more through the walls you might have to perhaps add yet another layer here to reduce this one so you don't overload the the structure so you guess you can see here <laughs> What goes around comes around. There's so many transmission paths to consider here. And yeah, the, I'm just scratching the surface here. But I hope that I might have pre presented you with some kind of novel idea here that you, maybe you haven't th thought about before. So let me know in the comments. I'd love to. I, I hope this video is useful to you. See ya.